Oh my god, what are Rick and Ryan up to now? It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. Welcome back, everybody. You are listening live and in living color to the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, what's good, man? What up, dog? How you doing? I, man, you you just called it. This heat is killing me. Yeah, this is some ridiculous, man. Like I told you, we are not supposed to know what chicken feels like in an air fryer we're not supposed to know what it feels like no we are not but it's but happening. here we are mm-hmm. it's a hundred so, in hell outside that's right making our <laughs> ac units work that much harder and they really ain't working <laughs> <laughs> if it goes completely out we in trouble boy so it was uh, sad is a few weeks ago we traveled you know we did a road trip to california Mm-hmm. I was in Big Bear, California. High was 80 the entire week. They get 300 days of sunshine a year in this particular area, in this particular valley. And it hardly ever gets over 85, 90 degrees. And the humidity is like 3%. Wow. You come here, the temperature is 95 degrees, but the the humidity is 68%. makes it feel <laughs> like 150. Now, it was hot as hell when we drove through the Mojave Desert. Oh, I bet it was. That's like 115. That was the actual degrees. But, uh, yeah. So this is, I'm ready for this cooler air to come in. Football's around the corner, so we should be getting that fall weather soon. That is correct. Um, want to get to something I just read in the news earlier today before Mm -hmm. we get to the uh, content. Uh, I guess congratulations are in order. Uh, Larsa Pippen. And Marcus Jordan have announced that they are engaged. So yet another Pippin needs another Jordan to get a ring. <laughs> I was about to say, who are they? But gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Mazel tov. All right. Moving right along. Hey, um, I know you don't frequent McDonald's very much. At all. But, well, yeah, that too. But this is for everybody who does or has on occasion gone through the old drive through I, I ran across an article in uh, the old interweb it said McDonald's worker leaves people fuming after explaining how the drive through works. Some of this we kind of knew, but some of it just sheds a little bit extra light on uh, what goes on. And, um, Think about this the next time you go. All right, hold on, because I didn't read the article, so I'm going to learn this with the with just with the crowd that's listening. Okay, uh, live here. But is this how the drive through works from McDonald's point of view or from a customer's point of view? This is the McDonald's employees telling you what goes on on their end. Got you. Yeah. Yeah, this is not the ins and outs of the technicalities of how the microphone and the speaker works. This is what McDonald's employees are experiencing and or doing while you're at the drive-thru. And um, Sounds like a lot of whining. Some, yeah. Um, They're always listening. That's number one. So when you think that you're at a drive-thru and they're not paying attention, even if they say, can you hold on for a second? The mic is still hot. So whatever you say is being heard and it's not just being heard by that one employee. There's usually two or three employees that have the headsets on because they're assisting each other. And it can be anything from God, this dude is slow. Why can't you just take my order? There's nobody in front of me. You shouldn't need to put me on hold. You know, something as simple as that. Or it says here, they've heard uh, parents yelling at children. Um, giving personal details during conversations that you think the drive through uh, employee is not privy to. Um, 
yeah, what was it here? Most of them are like parents telling kids to shut up or shut it before they give them something to cry about or threatening to make the kids walk home if they don't hurry up and pick something or we don't need any effing ice cream conversations. So that's interesting. So be careful what you say when you're going through a McDonald's drive through Right, because um, I'm in total agreement with Bernie Mac when he says, Big Mama taught us all, we don't we don't mess with people that mess with our food. Anything that messes with your stomach or your booty hole, you don't mess with it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the second thing, smile for the camera. Uh, because it says here the most disturbing <laughs> detail is the fact that they take a quick mug shot of you in your car before you hit that window. And the reason for this, she says, is so that they know whose order is whose. Now, I did not know that. I didn't either. So it's like, wow. I, You know, I figured they know whose order is whose because I got here before the guy behind me. So you must have took my order first, you know? Well, unless they're talking about those zipper line drive throughs that they have now. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot McDonald's is you know, big in, on that. In case, you know, my car, I may have showed up first and ordered first, and you may came in second, but you pull out in front of me. Yeah, yeah, I can see that, Dan. But I tell you what, there, there's some other little things that they mention in the article, um, like what goes on with them inside. They're under pressure from different people. They're getting yelled at by whoever's at the window. Not to mention who's at the uh, order window. Um, it says here that um, they can't understand some customers. I can see that. If you have an accent and you're trying to order something or you're one of those people, you know, I'm guilty of this because I did it just for fun one time because I knew somebody who worked there. I asked for a Whopper with cheese at the drive through window. <laughs> uh, my daughter... Uh, my youngest daughter, she's really good at accents and I, you know, me too. So like, we'll go mm -hmm. to a drive through We'll both be talking in like an Australian accent all the way through it or a British accent. I've done that before. I've, I've done the Southern accent. How do y'all, can I yeah, get one of them there, Big Macs? Yep. Let me see. Now I'm gonna have to do the British accent next time I go. <laughs> so now I've got a built in excuse just to go to McDonald's. Hey. Well, in I'd like a drive, hot drive Sunday. <laughs> any drive through. Th that's true. Any drive through. But now that I know McDonald's takes a snapshot of me, I'm going to be making an ugly face when I look out the window. <laughs> kind of like and it says the here Viking that they Voyager. they have to do some. They have to deal with some very rude people. I I can see that when you're in the public, there's always going to be that person. And it says here that they're also under a lot of pressure. I can see that, especially during that lunch rush. Um, when I am at McDonald's or any drive through for that matter, I want to get there, get my stuff, and move right along. So I'm pretty sure they are under equal amount of stress to get everybody in line out the uh, drive as quick as possible. So we yeah, do I've understand. actually seen countdown clocks. Like they have to have each meal out by a certain amount of minutes. Mm. And it and it flashes if it goes over their countdown clock. So I don't know if they get deducted or graded on that or what during their, their shift. Like if you have X amount of whatever. I don't know. Wow. I never even thought about that. Um so yeah, we we are not making light whatsoever of the McDonald's employees. We know that they are working hard. This is just interesting to hear about some of the things that we may or may not have known about, or we might have had a theory, and this puts it in light. Yeah, it kind of makes sense with the the always hot mic. I like it with you though. I didn't know they took a picture. Yeah, I, I figured you know they they could have um, figured out a different way to uh, figure out who's who's is who's. I mean, if y'all well, like give me the uh, ask my name, what color car am I driving? And I mean, I've that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, if I just order a drink and you want to give me a full meal, I'm not going to say no, since I've already paid for the drink. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's as long bad. as they don't make you, 
as long as they don't make you do it at both, you know, at the same window. There's yeah. your meal. It's 14. No, I only ordered a drink. Oh, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Real quick before we wrap this up, if there's anybody out there that just happens to see me in a McDonald's drive through line, if you're in front of me, I have no problem with you paying it forward by paying for my meal. As long as you order a small fry, that's it. <laughs> Gonna starve y'all. Okay, right. I'll give you. I'll give you a happy meal. Ooh, a really teeny tiny fry, and a teeny tiny burger. But you get a toy. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> look, I, look behind I, you. Yeah, I know how you feel about toys. Well, yeah, but you're not going to find a hot toy <laughs> in the McDonald's. Yeah. Hey, if, if they start putting hot toys in Happy Meals, dude, <laughs> dude, I'm there. Good. Hey, like I, I, need to, I need to get another Happy Meal, but sir, it's breakfast time. I don't care. <laughs> Put a pancake in it. Give me the hot Feed dog. me. They might even make a movie about that. Which brings me to my next subject. Have you, uh, have you been, uh, looking at these ongoing Hollywood strikes? Um, yeah. I mean, I've been paying it some attention because some of my shows are being, uh, affected by it, but. Yeah, I think I think everybody's show is eventually going to be affected by it. Um, and just for the people that don't know, there's actually two strikes going on. Um, one is the uh, SAG uh, AFTRA strike, and the other is the WGA strike. And WGA is the Writers Guild. So this one is important in the fact that the writers they don't feel that they're getting their share as far as pay and benefits for these shows, especially these hit shows. And I can see that because I read in an article and I won't say which streaming service it is, <clears throat> Netflix, um, but there's a streaming service that when shows got really big, they would cancel them for no reason as to not make the show is so hugely popular that they're forced to go on and they're forced to give said writers um, more money. And does it say what shows were canceled? It did not. Uh, but I do know that Netflix is guilty of that because they've canceled a lot of big shows. And when the streaming services cancel, it's not about ratings because it's not a weekly uh, TV show. And all that. Uh, this is something that people stream in their spare time at different times of the day. So, well, only Netflix. No, nah, like it, it's it is not only. Hold Netflix, on, hold though. on. Let me finish. Okay, it's only it's only Netflix that doesn't do a weekly show. If you go to Disney yeah. Plus, yeah, I it's see what you're every saying. week. Mm -hmm. If you go to Paramount or Hulu, it's every week. So yeah, Netflix, Net Netflix made their bones off of binging. Time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's where we get the uh, phrase Netflix and chill, even though it yes. really doesn't have much to do with Netflix anymore. But I also think, though, too, that because they have that top 10 thing that's on Netflix, mm -hmm. I think some of the stuff like there's there's some shows that I was really into that they canceled, obviously. Um, but I, I think it was just lack of other shows were being watched more, if that makes sense. I don't know. Maybe yeah. maybe they want to make more room for new new content. Don't want to keep the old stuff on there. Although, um, I mean, you could have a limitless uh, streaming service. You don't have to get rid of anything. You would think. Well, I could be wrong. I I don't know. I mean, I would assume that every streaming service has an X amount of data storage for their content. You know what I mean? And they're always yeah. wanting new content. So they're going to, for instance, I mean, in all actuality, 
this the TV show The Walking Dead could have lasted forever. Now it lasted eleven years, which is really long on mm. the AMC network. But what they did is they've now done spinoffs of that said branch. You know, they've got little branches coming off the main trunk. I think that's where the streaming services are, you know, look at Disney Plus with all the Star Wars flicks coming out. I mean, they're just branching out. Marvel's doing the same thing. Yeah. It's but it's I think crazy. that it's probably, you know, if I have a show. Well, I don't know, because HBO, the Max one, they have shows. I mean, they still have like The Wire and Oz and Sopranos. And all, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that whole theory is out the window. It 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 just throws me for a loop because um But Netflix are assholes anyway. Well said. I couldn't have said that better myself. You hear that Netflix? I mean, you're trying to charge somebody that won't, you know, you're not allowed to show your password, blah, blah, blah. And that's bullshit. I'm paying you a monthly fee. You don't give a damn who watches it. You're going to fuck around and find out that people going to cancel this shit and start watching Paramount Plus or some shit to have the same shows on there. But th- there you go. Which wouldn't be a bad thing. Except for the commercials. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of getting used to the commercials. I'm currently in a uh, free trial. For uh, Paramount Plus, me, I, I'm, you know, every time I, you know, look at these other streaming services, I see why I've still got Disney and nothing else. Yeah, I got them all. <laughs> Which one did you watch the most, though? I watch them all pretty much evenly for different reasons. Yeah, I guess I can see that. I don't know. I tell you though, Netflix is the one I watch the least. Mm. Really? I suppose I can see that. The only time I jump in on Netflix is like when Ozark was out. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll watch the the Karate Kid series that's out, Um, and and then if I get like okay, I need to get caught up on Flash because I see this last season that I want to. You know, I think I'm in like season six or seven. You know, I just I'll watch six or eight episodes and then I won't watch again for another three or four weeks, and then I'll watch another six or eight episodes. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, that's a good point. I, I had a free trial of um um Netflix and. I didn't even watch the uh, Karate Kid TV show. What was that called, too? I can't believe I, I didn't check that out. And that's not the Karate Kid. What is it called? It is called... What's the uh, place where they fight at? They, they train? Uh, that's Cobra the name. Kai. That's it's called Cobra Kai. Thank you. Cobra Kai. But I it's, I didn't... It's uh, actually It's actually a very well put together series. I heard it was, but for whatever reason i just watched other things so i need the to... only the only thing that that sucks is that mm-hmm. rest his soul pat morieta was dead before they ever did any of this so every time that they go back to mr miyagi are from the movies but all, all of the old school characters are there the original Kai, the original instructor john crease uh all of them i mean mm-hmm. terry silver uh, the Asian dude that Daniel San fought in Okinawa, uh, all them guys, they're all in this series. Yeah, one of these days I'll have to go back and check that out. How many seasons did it run? It's still going. I think they just did their fourth or fifth season. Oh, okay. And it's widely popular, so I'm sure it'll be another season or so. You know, one series, and I know we're going off topic, that I'm really disappointed. They only did two seasons and then said they were going to be done. It's called Your Honor. And it came Hmm. on Showtime. It was a great series. Never heard of that. Who's in it? uh, You know the dude that played the lead in Breaking Bad? The the professor? Yeah. That was Walter? Yeah, Walter White. He plays the judge who gets into some 
serious deal. You know, I don't want to spoil it because it's it's one of those that catches you in the first first show and mm-hmm. you just want to keep watching it. It's it is it's if it was a book, it'd be a page turner. It is mm. every show has a cliffhanger. Every show keeps you wanting to go more and more and more. Like I said they did two seasons and then I read they weren't making a third, which really hmm. that really chaps my hide. Typical TV though. But thank God know. things like Ashoka's coming on. So which I will probably get to episode one tonight. It, it drops it it drops at seven PM Central right. Time. They well both episodes will drop tonight. Yeah, right. First one two. and two. Uh so will, by the time I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'll mm-hmm. probably wait a couple weeks so I can watch two or three or four so in the same them? row. Yeah. I don't like to wait. I, I wish I had your willpower. I'm watching it tonight. I mean, you know, I would be upset if I didn't watch it. Now I keep saying, or I want, is Thrawn gonna be in this series? Yes, and they have already said he's played by, um, God, I forget his name. You know that guy that plays the creepy villains on a lot of stuff, Mads Mikkelsen. Mm-hmm. His brother is playing uh, Thrawn. Mm-hmm. So just imagine Mads Mikkelsen is blue and, you know. Now, you see, so th- this Ashoka series, timeline it, timeline it for me. Um, It's in the Mandoverse, so it takes place three to five years after Return of the Jedi. Okay, so we're in the, we're in the Mandalorian stage, the same time frame, mm-hmm. but they're going to, but they're going to be showing flashbacks with Christian Haydenson? Yes. Okay. So I don't know if this... the flashbacks will begin with these first two episodes, but he is confirmed to be in it. So in the so do you read Star Wars books? I've read some, yes. Okay. So Timothy Zahn did mm-hmm. a three parter on Heir Thrawn, to the Empire. And then he did the three parter with Heir to the Empire. So I'm assuming this is in the Heir to the Empire realm area timeline. I believe so. Interesting. It's either in that timeline or right before it. Well, it would have okay because it had to take place after Empire Strikes or Return of the Jedi. Yes. And then I'm assuming Thrawn will all already be Grand Admiral Thrawn. I believe so because I believe in Rebels he was already a Grand Admiral. Have you read the the trilogy by Timothy Zahn about Thrawn? I have not. Shame on I'm me the, because I actually have those books, but I have not got to them yet. I'm in the first book, and he's Lieutenant Thrawn right now. The early years, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I'm, and just I'm just so people, you know, don't uh, cuss us out in the um, comments if you're watching on YouTube. There are two separate Thrawn trilogy books from Timothy Zahn: the early years and the later years. I just know that because I've got all six. There are six books total? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, let me see what we got here. Um, Reach for it, Ricky. Make sure I got this right. Um, Of course, I missed one. All right. So, if you're talking about these... That's the one I'm reading right now, that first one you pulled up. Yes. Yeah. These are the um, the early Thrawn years. And then, if I don't break the microphone, you've got to, if you can find these, these are the later Thrawn years. What is the, what is the, the timeline on those? Don't know. Haven't got to these yet. Uh, this is uh, Chaos Rising, Lesser Evil, and Ascendancy. And between fleet and family, where does your loyalty lie? I don't know how much later, but uh, Man, it takes you place just after my nipples first. hard. I do what I, I like can that. for the team. I like that. If, now, if you I, were I in this room right now, you would see so much Star Wars stuff. Oh, I believe you. I just didn't realize there were two separate sets. 
because mm-hmm. Timothy Timothy Zahn is a very w- good writer for Star Wars. Yes, he is. Because you know he did the Heir to the Empire trilogy, and then he has two trilogies with Thrawn. So I'm I'm pretty stoked to. And, and I that. like writers I, like that because they know the material because they've done it so long. I also recommend you to actually take a sheet of the books in order and mm-hmm. actually read them from in order from the old Republic to to the new newer timeline. Those old Republic books are really, really good. Hmm. I might have to check one of those out. I think the farthest my stuff goes back is a uh, a Clone Wars novel. Well, no, I take it back because I've got the novelization of uh, Episode One, The Phantom Menace. So that's as far as I yeah. go back. So Old Republic would be uh, Darth Malgus, and mm-hmm. uh, who's uh, which is the one. Um, that invented the the rule, rule of, two? of two. I think what that was, was Darth Bane. Bane, Bane. thank Darth you, Darth Bane. He though there's a trilogy of him. Uh, yeah, all those books are really, really well written. Nice. See now, now I'm going to become a bookworm again. Thanks for that. You're welcome. I do what I can. As if I don't have enough on my plate. Um. Switching gears real quick because I want to do this before we get out of here because we've been gone for a couple weeks. Yay. Welcome back, Ricky. Welcome back. Big show. Um, you know, we talk about football a lot on, on this channel because a little bit football. We love football. Um, for you guys that are, you know, stick with us till the end of the shows. We've been doing a uh, division each week. Because we weren't here last week, we're giving you or bonus. the week before. We're doing two divisions this week and two divisions <laughs> next week. And we're doing the two next week simply because we're winding down on the preseason and we want to be ready for the regular season. And then we'll have our football extravaganza show where we pick out the whole year. Yeah. Here's to the Las Vegas Raiders, 3-13. and 13. Okay, um... I'm not bitter. I don't really want that coach fired, do I? They're going to win more than three games. I know, just just despite me. They're going to tie at least two. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about a tie. That would just... Is that, yeah. that would be a record if, this, if one team tied in two games in a year. Well, you're talking about the same team that broke the record of the most uh, double-digit come-from-behind losses last year. True that. So if anybody can do it. But enough about them, because we're talking about the East, the NFC East and the AFC East. So today, who do you want to start with, the AFC or the NFC? Hey, whatever you whatever you choose. I'm ready for either one. Okay. Um, the NFC here is the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Giants, and the Commanders. <clears throat> now before you tell me what order you think they are going to uh, finish in, I'm going to give you their final win-loss totals last year. The Eagles were 14-3 and represented the NFC in the Super Bowl. The Cowboys were 12-5. and The Giants were 9-7. and They came on strong at the end of the season. And the Commanders were 8-8-1. Eight, eight, and, and let me go back to the Giants. The Giants were 9-7-1. And I believe that tie was with each other. Okay. So, obviously, the Eagles are still going to be at the top of that division, I think. I, I think they'll win, it. they'll win that division again. Um, But I, I think the other three teams will be improved. Um, I think the commanders, with the enemy going over there, will help that offense out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not that he's playing, but, I mean, they'll probably still finish last in their division. So you got the Eagles one, the Commanders four. And uh, I'm going to go Giants two, Cowboys three. Wow. Wow. Um, I agree with you 100%. 
And even though those are the the uh, order that we agree with, I feel like Dallas is going to lose one more game than last year. The Giants are going to win a couple more games than last year. And that's the reason for the flip-flop. And the Commanders will win one or two more games than they did last year, but that still only puts them at nine or ten wins. So that's the reason why they're at the bottom. But you see the improvement. Yeah. It should be. I mean, if they play what their potential is on paper, mm -hmm. um, it, sh it should be a fairly um, competitive division. Now, not as competitive as their AFC counterparts, but um, well, it should be a pretty nice division. Now that you mention that, if you look at the AFC East, and I'll give you... Um, Man, they are loaded. The Bills were, um, I believe, won the division. If I'm correct, was it the Dolphins that were in second, the Patriots were in third, and the Jets were bringing up the rear? Uh. Yeah, Bills, Dolphins, Patriots, Jets. Bills were thirteen and three. Dolphins were nine and eight. New England was eight and nine, and the Jets were seven and ten. Okay. Um, man, this one's tough, but I still think the Bills are the team to beat in that division. But it's going to be a lot harder for them to come out on top. Dolphins will be second. Patriots will be third. Excuse me. Jets will be third. Patriots will be fourth. Yeah, I said it, Belichick fans. The Patriots will be fourth in that division. Um, Man, the Patriots finish fourth. That's... But it'll be just like the NFC East. They'll, they'll have a winning record, but they'll be fourth in that division. Yeah, I'm uh Miami is going to win this division next year. Ooh. Going with the sexy and, pick. Well, man, they just loaded up on talent. I mean, you know, they just they just loaded up. Um if they can if they get good quarterback play, they're gonna be a they're gonna be a tough out. Um, now now we're talking about Tua. Who's said, decent if he stays healthy? <laughs> That line, though, is he gonna stay healthy? We don't know, but we're we're this is just preseason picks. Yeah, yeah. Um. So this is gonna be shocking. So Dolphins one, Jets two, Bills three, Patriots four. You know what? Four weeks ago, if you would have said that, that would be shocking. I'm not really shocked now. That could happen. The Aaron Rodgers factor may be. Big enough to uh, make it work. Yeah, I think um, think they're going to be a surprisingly well put together football team this year. Mm -hmm. Now, I do think their strength will be offense. Their weakness will be defense. Really? So... I think they're going to have actually physically outscore. I mean, that's how you win. I'm, I'm not trying to be redundant here. 10 to 7 outscores them. I mean, but they're going to have to win 35, 31, 30 to 28, those types of games. You know, the Dick Vermeil Chiefs era type wins. And when you're that, playing the Buffaloes of the world, you will need to score. Yes. And the Miamis. Yeah. So I, they're going to have to do that. Um, I could see Buffalo finishing second, Jets third. Patri I'm with you, Patriots in the last place. But I think the Jets are going to make a move this year. I just, it's just like everything's kind of like in line for them. Stars are aligning. And I do reserve the right to change my mind at any time, <laughs> but and, that's how and, I feel today. And we probably will do that leading up to the regular season, and probably somewhere in the middle of the season, we'll change it again. Yeah, that's that what we Tuesday do. before the season starts, I think we'll know who's starting, that type of thing. We'll have a clearer Injuries, vision. yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, like the Jets just signed Cook from the Vikings, the running back. So, I mean, they've got 
dogs. And Ooh. they already had Bryce Hall. I didn't know they signed Dalvin Cook. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that yeah. Your your prediction does sound a lot better now. I mean, and not not that he's a great wide receiver, but McCall Hardman signed with them, who has won two Super Bowls with Kansas City. Uh I mean they got uh Dotson, the wide receiver. They've got two killer running backs. They got a decent O line. Obviously, the quarterback is Aaron Rodgers. You know, yeah, I'm going to say this about Aaron Rodgers. This may be the unpopular I, opinion, but I said the only quarterback Aaron Rodgers, is Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers is like Peyton Manning in the fact that he can make an average receiver look really good. Yeah, I agree. So, no, it didn't say he was Peyton Manning. I said. He has that effect where he can make the receivers look better. Yeah, I mean, he, he can make seems, me look good out there. And I don't know if you've been watching the Hard Knocks show I have about not. the Jets. Um, he seems more personable than what he did in Green Bay. I mean, I don't know. Tom will it might tell, be for the I camera. Can, it, it, I'm sure it is, but I that's that's my prediction. Dolphins, Jets, Bills, Pats. All right, before we wrap it up, gang, um, you've heard our predictions. Feel free to drop me a comment. Let me know your predictions. And like I said, we reserve the right to make changes, and we will. Show, you got anything before we get out for the week? No, sir. All right, everybody, I want y'all to. Yes, it's definitely good to be back. Good to have you back. Stay indoors. In air conditioning. Love that air conditioning. If it goes out, Move south or north. Yeah. <laughs> not south. Yeah, not north. south. <laughs> All right, so take us on out of here. Before we go, please hit the like button and hit that subscribe button. And that way you can get the notifications when we uh post that on there. And if I'm not mistaken, we we're on most of your podcast platforms. Absolutely. Still working on the on the big two. And uh, you know, as always, tomorrow there's anybody is there from promised. Apple, please uh speed this up. Amen. Get us in there. But tomorrow's not promised, so be sure to love one another. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to make that first that first step. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. You guys take care.